Good morning, Modern Setters. It's a nice, balmy 42 degrees out this morning. But what's kind of nice about that is here it is October. We still haven't even had a frost yet. Our normal frost date is usually September 13th. So we're ahead of the game by a few weeks. Look at that fog. Did you guys eat all your veggies yesterday? Looks like you did. You didn't eat your pepper. We grew that pepper since January for you girls. You need to eat your pepper today, please. You're drooling there, sausage. I wonder if Charlotte from Charlotte's Web's on there. I don't see her. The turkeys are back in turkey jail. Because if I leave them in here all day, they'll roost at night on their roosting pole. When I let them out the other day, I had to herd them back in there. And they weren't roosting on the roosting pole. So I'm going to leave them in there for a few days and see if that helps. Come on. The pasture over here is still pretty thick with moss and a bunch of other stuff. So I want to get the girls scratching it a little bit better before we move them. Let's see how they're doing this morning. How you doing, mean mama? Chicks look good. She loves knocking over the feeder for them. She's a good mom. Morning, guys. What are you up to? Good morning, girls. In yesterday's video, we went to the local Oktoberfest in our town, and they were singing a song, Alice, Alice, who the heck is Alice? What's the origin of that song? There must be some kind of meaning or something to it. There was an old, I don't know if I want to call them a poker band, but their music seemed authentic for Oktoberfest. So I'm assuming that the song has a meaning. So if you know the meaning, leave it in the description down below. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll put a link right here for yesterday's video. The song was stuck in my head and Olivia said yesterday. And we woke up with it stuck in our head again. Gina says she can't see out of her windshield, so she needs some new wiper blades. People have been asking me what I've been using for knives. I like the Kershaw brand. I ended up having to get a new knife the other day. Willow. 
bit onto this on my other knife and bent it right out so it wouldn't stay in my pocket. I ended up getting this one on Amazon. I'll put a link to it in the description down below. I want to say it was only like 13 bucks. I haven't really said much about it because I wanted to make sure it was decent. And it's a really good knife, especially for the money. Oh, I figured if the goats are going to be chewing on my clips and bending them, and then I keep losing the knives, I might have to replace them every once in a while. But this one so far is a nice slender clip, so they can't get onto that. So it works good. All right, guys, this next job is literally going to be a crappy job, but it's going to turn out to be very fruitful. I know, it's kind of like an anti whatever you want to call that stuff. I don't know, but it's the truth. <sighs> I've been putting it off for two years now. And it's something we need to do. And the excavator's gonna make it a lot easier. That apple tree branch is in the way. Gotta cut it down. Need to get over here. And here is full of hay, hay bale, and chicken poo and pig poo. It doesn't smell, because this is the deep bedding method. So I want to get it cleaned up and out so I can finish composting.
So I learned my lesson on using hay. You use hay, it packs tight, and you can't get in there and clean it out by hand. I should say you can't. It'd be a lot of work. So this year, after we get this all cleaned out, we're using straw. The straw, I don't think, will get all like interlocked and matted like the hay does. I guess we'll find out next spring. But the hay gets matted and stuck like a carpet. I'm hoping with straw, doing it with straw this year, this doesn't happen. issue is the height of this with the excavator. I thought I'd be able to get in further, but this is limiting my reach. I guess that was wishful thinking. I thought we'd be able to do more of that, or this, with the excavator. But this is as much as we're gonna be able to do. We don't get the height. So we'll have to do the rest by hand and with the Kubota. The Kubota bucket's pretty small and the stuff's all matted and clumped together. That you can break it up, but it doesn't want to go into the bucket, and that's the issue. It doesn't stink, it's not why I'm wearing the mask. I'm wearing the mask because I don't want to be breathing in all the poop particles. I don't think my lungs would appreciate that. Look at all these worms, guys. Can you see them all? They're all over the place. All over here. That's what we want to see.
one of those jobs you've just been putting off and dreading to do. This has been that job. But you know what? It was nowhere near as bad as I thought it would be. And the worst part is, is we would have had a lot better growing season if I would have done this last fall and composted this. <sighs> but now we have a lot of awesome, soon to be compost for our growing season next spring. And now I know this project isn't that bad. It took me about two hours to do. So I thought it was gonna be a lot worse. The only thing I really ended up doing with the excavator is making a mess up here in the grass. So lesson learned, I don't need the excavator. We can do it with the Kubota. <sighs> the things you get in your head sometimes and you just kind of tell yourself, you can't do it, you can't do that. And then you just feel defeated before you even start. That's what this project was. So we need to learn to get out of our head and tell ourselves we can do it, no matter what. Because we always do get it done. Why don't we remember that? I don't know. I whipped up a little bit of bread this morning. I guess dough for bread. Been letting it rise all day. Now I'm gonna get it shaped into our loaf pans and get it baking. Gotta let it rise in the pans for about an hour before we put it in the oven. Roasted beets, yum. You girls want some food scraps? Come on. You girls are crazy. Ready? You can have the beets that we just cut up. Mmm, that looks so delicious. Yum, oh. What the heck? You missed it. You should have seen Willow in the background. She was, she jumped like this high. She like jumped as high as you. I've never seen Willow jump that high. What the heck? Oh, foolish animals. I don't know who it is, but it's either Copa or Pesciuto. <laughs> That's the winter pigs. One of the two. The winter pigs are named Copa and Pesciuto, so we don't know which one it was. Or is, I should say. For a long time, too.
the temperature for the key. Do you remember that, Gene? I think that's 375. Ooh, that's hot. 375. I thought we would remember. Oh man, that quiche looks delicious. That looks like the best one yet. I think we're getting better at them. Here come the ducks. You're supposed to be sleeping, guys. It's pretty dark out. What do you want? Go at milking, but I wanted to show you how bright it is down here now that we cleared out this area down by the goat barn with that outside light. Man, look at that. It's almost like daytime down here. All right, maybe not quite. I'm gonna go milk the goats. So this is where we're gonna end. I shouldn't say goats. I only got one goat to milk. I'm gonna go milk the goat, Willow. This is where I'm gonna end today's video, and we'll see you right back here. And the next one at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. <laughs> Bye. What's the matter?